Hello, I'm Spiro with SP Water, and thank you for joining me here today. Well, I've been having some issues with my cell phone and my tablet charging near my bed. I don't have a holder for the cord and it kind of falls all over the place. I started making some cell phone and tablet chargers. Uh, here's one I made. It's not wood turning, but uh, but it only holds my cell phone, not an iPad. And I want to make something that will be able to charge either my phone or my tablet. I think this is Massacar wood. It's very beautiful wood, and I think I just butchered that pronunciation. <laughs> so I've designed this project to accommodate either my cell phone or a tablet for charging. Not together, but either or. Today's project will probably work for any phone or tablet. Uh, you just have to make it to your specifications. So this should be a fun project. So I hope you stick around to the very end. <laughs> and enjoy the show. Thanks. Here is a piece of Wingate wood. It is very beautiful. It's dark and will match my dark furniture in my room. It is four and five eighths by five and a quarter by two and one eighth inch thick. And I've chosen to uh, mount the wood on a faceplate with a waste block because I want to use all of the wood. It's fairly expensive wood, so I want to keep as much of it as possible. Now I will mount the pine waste block to the Wenge wood with some yellow glue type on two. Then I'll securely clamp the waste block and let it dry for 24 hours. In the meantime, I'm going to take this hard rubber 5 8 inch round or 15 millimeter round and drill a hole through the center and I'm going to use this piece as the cord holder for the charger. I'm using a 732nd inch split point drill bit with a hand drill. You can use a drill press if you'd like. And I'm gonna drill a hole in the center all the way through the rubber washer. And I will stop drilling when I see wood chips and hand turn the rubber piece off so I don't rip it. And I'm pretty happy with the results. And once that rubber hole is wrapped around the plastic, um, it just will not move. It's very, very secure. It won't move up, down, or side to side. It may flex a little bit, but that's fine. And the charging connector is raised a little bit past the rubber to accommodate for the cases. Now the next day, I'll remove the clamps and inspect the wood and the glue, make sure everything's okay and then make a few measurements. Uh, the outer ring is four and three eighths in diameter. The inner ring is two and a half inches. Making the ring an inch thick, I will then make three parallel 70 degree lines starting from the center working to the left. This is for your device angle and the width including the cases. Then I will extend all three parallel lines on the side for a home button reach and directly in the center I'll make a horizontal line. Now I'll start drilling the first hole at a 70 degree angle between those lines and you can tilt your drill press table if you need to but I don't want to move mine because it's really accurate at 90 degrees and I used a, a drill gauge to determine the size hole I needed for my cord and this will vary depending on your cell phone or tablet. And you'll just position your bit horizontal and vertical in between the three lines, which will end up giving you your 70 degree angle. Next, I just used a clamp and I'm going to push down on the clamp to hold it into position and drill the hole just past the uh, inner circle. And I'll just double check the angle and alignment with a pencil. And the next hole will be exactly the same, but at 90 degrees. You'll make sure that it's horizontal and vertical, uh, center aligned. And this is a 9 16th bit, but depending on your tablet or cell phone, you may choose a different size. And depending on your finger size. <laughs> 
this hole will be for a home button access for a phone or tablet, but you don't have to put this in if you don't want to. And for the last hole, I'm using this monstrous one inch drill bit, but you can use a foster bit if you want, if you don't have one of these. And I used my drill press vise to clamp the waste block and some wooden wedges to level it out to make sure that it's 90 degrees to the outside of the wood. Now I align the bit in the middle of the 70 degree line that intersects with the inside of the outer ring. Yeah. And this time you'll want to drill all the way through. This stuff smells great. And just to recap, there is a one inch through hole for the device rest, 70 degree cord hole, and a 9 16th home button hole. Also a note that the one inch drill bit went through the waste block a little bit, but that's not gonna interfere with the faceplate or the mounting screws. I don't believe it'll be a safety issue. And then I'm going to also cut down on the wood corners for safety and to salvage some of the wood. I can now finally get to some wood turning <laughs> and I'm gonna use my 5 8 inch bowl gouge and I'm gonna clean up the faces to cut down on some of the wobble and then I'll start rounding out the blank by softening the corners and then doing some more aggressive cuts. I'd also like to send out a warning if you're going to use Wenge wood, it is extremely difficult to turn. It is very hard and tough. And not only is Wenge wood hard, it is extremely splintery. And the chances of uh, getting an infection from the splinters is higher than normal. I have already received four splinters from this piece of wood before I mounted it to the lathe. And I know that it's not as safe, it could cause um, some issues, but uh, my left hand is farther away from the tool rest because I'm trying to avoid getting any splinters stuck in my hand. And I don't like using gloves when I would turn but eventually maybe I'll buy a tool shield. Another tip on this Wenge wood is that I'm using a lower speed than normal and taking deeper cuts than I usually would. And this is to help out with uh, the dulling of the tool so I don't have to sharpen my tools like every two minutes, at least until it's been rounded out. And I'm cutting inwards towards the headstock to avoid splitting some of the fibers. Periodically I'll check and there's still a little bit left to round out but it's going pretty well. It's just taking a while to rough out. It's, it's a slow process on this wood but in the end I think it'll be worth it. And here I'm using a round carbide cutter tool to see if it made any kind of a difference and it's about the same as my bowl gouge. You also want to keep in mind too when you're cutting over the holes that you drill, there is nothing there but air so don't push your tool in at all or else you could have a serious issue. Just keep gliding over that hole. Now I'll make sure that the face of the blank and the sides are at a 90 degree angle and mine was not so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit and keep checking until it's 90 degrees. Next I'm using my one inch skew as a scraper to finish some smoothing cuts so I'm taking very very light light cuts and that is one smooth surface now I'll mark a line about one inch out from the edge now you can use a Fosner bit to core out the center but I'm going to use a half inch parting tool to save on wood now when you're parting off the ring, make sure that you are pushing very, very slowly and let the tool do the cutting and make sure that you have at least one relief cut to the right of your original cut line. And when the cut starts to get a little deep, I add a little extra light here, uh, just so I can see. I know it's not great for the camera, but um, I need it to see to cut. 
I will also mark my parting tool for the proper depth. Uh, not quite all the way through, but just shy. That way I can stop before I break through. And I can also clean up the hole. It gets clogged up as you're going. Well, that overextended hole is actually a neat little window to see how much I have left. And I can also visually see that the waste block is a larger diameter than the actual uh, parting line that I have going. So even if I part all the way through the Wenge wood, the waste block will still hold the ring on. So I will stop when I see white chips. And there it is. Next, I will take my 1 8 inch parting tool and part the ring off from the waist block. And when I get close, I'll slow the lathe down to a crawl. Also, mind your fingers between the wood and the tool rest. You definitely don't want to get them caught in there. This leftover piece will make a nice bottle stopper. Moving on to the belt sander, I will sand the faces of the ring with the grain. Now I can start sanding the inner circle with a 80 grit sanding drum on my drill press. And I have to do this in two stages, the top half and the bottom half, because the drums are not long enough to do the entire piece at once. And let's make this number five splinter. I'll also use a smaller diameter drill drum for the smaller circle. Now I'm going to take a piece of the ring out by making two cuts. This first cut will be cutting a little bit below half of the home buttonhole. And you could use a bandsaw here, but I don't have one, so I'm using my Jizuki saw. And for the second cut, I'm gonna use a protractor, an angle finder here, and have it flush with the top of the ring, and the marker arm will be at 70 degrees from the center of the cord hole. Next, I'll bring it over to the belt sander and just touch up some of those edges that I sawed. Here, I'm going to widen the rim of the cord hole to fit the rubber washer to a 5 8 inch. And I'm using a spade bit so I can uh, clear the uh, top portion of the ring uh, so the drill press chuck doesn't hit that. You can also use a Fosner bit with an extension that would work too. Another option would be to drill a 5 8 inch hole all the way through before you would turn the ring and insert a thicker rubber plug. Moving on to the stand, I'm going to cut some mahogany, African mahogany. And I cut a piece of this mahogany 7 by 3 by 2 inches and it is rough sawn and kiln dry which I cleaned up. And I think it'll contrast nicely with the Wenge wood. Next, I will mark a cutout semicircle for the stand, and I will position the cord hole at a slight angle about halfway down the mahogany with extra room on either side of the semicircle. I'd also like to mention that I cut the mahogany wood with the grain running in the same direction as the Wenge wood. So after all of the sanding and cutting is complete, I will use 91% alcohol to clean up all the dust out of the wood pores. Next, I'm going to dry fit my cell phone on the stand to ensure that I have the correct angle on the back support. Then I will just trace out the cord hole for this 2164 inch drill bit that I will use to go all the way through the mahogany stand. And with a pair of calipers, I'm going to mark the width of uh, 1.025 or 2.6 millimeters for the channel that the cord will sit in. And you want this to be fairly tight so that the cord will stay put. I'm going to use a couple of chisels to remove the wood from the cord channel and whatever means you decide to remove the wood with, uh, just make sure that the 
hole is not too shallow. Um, preferably deeper is better. It'll help hold the cord in place. And I'll just finish up with some folded sandpaper. And just one last time I will dry fit all of the pieces to ensure that they are fitting properly. So for the finish, I've decided to go with a friction polish that I am going to just let dry. And I think this is going to be best because I really want the Wenge wood to have a natural look. So I'm going to put three coats of this on and let the polish cure for about a week. So it's been about a week and one day and the polish is cured and it looks really nice and I've decided to add some rubber feet on the bottom and this will help stabilize the stand as well as making it uh, grip to the surfaces better. So I've decided to go with Type Bond 2, a yellow wood glue to have a pretty strong joint here and try not to get any in the cord hole when you're gluing. And you want to make sure that your cord holes are perfectly aligned. To help the clamping process, I made this little wooden wedge. It's round on one side and flat on the other. Now after 24 hours has passed, I will remove this clamp and the wood wedge and hopefully it stays together. If not, I can always add some thin screws from the bottom up. So I would definitely try this again and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's an interesting design but I was going for something a little weird. <laughs> And I think I achieved that. I like the idea of being able to upgrade this in the future and it holds my cell phone or my iPad uh, with a cord without having to glue it in. But you can also glue this in if you wanted to, like probably with some hot glue. And what's nice about this is the rubber is in there really well. And then I can just take this off. And then it fits in there really nice. And then you can take the plug out and pull the cord through. Just take your rubber piece right off, or grommet, or whatever you want to call this thing. And then you can take the cord out. Uh, another thing I really like to mention is this Wenge was, I, I've worked with Wenge before, but for some reason this time I've had so many splinters with this piece of wood. So if you're working with Wen Guy, please be careful. Here's a couple of clips of uh, the stand in action. It's very sturdy. Holds up pretty well. It has a nice flush fit on the back. Very supportive. And it comes off really easy. And the grommet and cord and everything stays put. As well as the cord underneath. So I hope you enjoyed the show, and if you have not subscribed, please feel free to do so. And stay safe in your shop. Thank you.